This spring, the U.S. was briefly overrun by cicadas. A real swarm of insects completely covered the country, averaging about 1 million cicadas per acre, and in 16 states. The number of insects is approximate, it's just impossible to count them, but scientists expected there would be hundreds of trillions of cicadas, or maybe even quadrillions. Whatever the case, under the weight of these insects, the branches of the trees broke and the noise that the cicadas made forced the researchers to protect their ears just to keep working. Because the cicada noise was at 110 decibels, it's like putting your head next to a jet plane, loud enough that it even hurts. There were so many cicadas that when they died, they had to deploy cleanup crews to clear away the bodies and scrub the roads, which had turned slippery from the cicada remains. But why? If you start killing them, all the other creatures will die too. Oh, we'll have one interesting video today, but first, coffee, and then we'll continue. A super unobtrusive reminder to hit the like button if you forget to do it at the end or while watching the video. The media called it a cicada apocalypse and cicada geddon. The invasion was so massive. Even 1 trillion cicadas, each about 1 inch long, would cover 15,800,000 miles if the insects were lined up end to end. This number of cicadas would be enough to build 66 bridges to the moon. In general, if you count it up, it'll turn out that 375,000 cicadas can fit on 0.4 square miles. I did some math and realized that cicadas altogether could cover at least 1.16 million square miles. For comparison, the area of New York City is 302 square miles, so there would be enough cicadas to cover almost 4,000 New York cities. Also, for comparison, the area of the U.S. is 3.8 million square miles, so cicadas could cover about a third of the whole country. Luckily for all of us, cicadas don't appear all at once or close enough together to take up such a large area. The thing is, these are unusual cicadas. They are periodical and come around rarely, once every 13 or 17 years depending on the brood. And when that happens, billions of insects appear all at once. But this year, the cycles of both broods coincided and about the same time they all emerged from the ground. This has happened for the first time in 221 years. The last time, exactly the same event, meaning the alignment of the schedules of both broods happened, was back in 1803. By the way, this was mentioned by US President Thomas Jefferson in his garden book. However, he called the cicadas locusts. But let's forgive him this mistake. Just think about it. No one alive today will see this happen again. Well, unless in the near future they invent an elixir of immortality, or at least learn to freeze people with the possibility of thawing them out in the future. Because the next time both broods will appear together will be in 2245. But don't worry, an even bigger joint appearance of cicadas will happen when the two biggest broods come out together in 2076. So eat right, take care of your health, and you'll have a chance to see a real cicada apocalypse one more time. Now let's take a look at the populations. Red dots mark the 13-year population, and blue dots mark the 17-year one. These cicadas are only found in North America, with the 13-year population spread across the Midwest and the Southeast of the USA in a total of 16 states. The 17-year population appears only in Illinois, but is notably more numerous. This year, they appeared at the same time at the end of April, after which the invasion continued for about six weeks. There are about 3,000 species of cicadas on our planet, but only seven of them are periodical cicadas. Three species have a 17-year cycle, and the rest have a 13-year cycle. Besides species, there's also the concept of brood that I mentioned. It classifies insects based on the year they emerge. There are a total of 30 such broods. All seven species of cicadas spend most of their lives underground as nymphs and feed on the sap that oozes from tree roots. That means nymphs never come out. Only after 13 or 17 years without daylight do they dig their way up, which is usually about two feet below the surface, and rise to the surface with the help of their front legs to become adults. Naturally, cicadas discard their exoskeletons right away, a once-in-a-lifetime event. It has to occur for them to reproduce. You might say it's kind of like late puberty? As they mature, cicadas look for vegetation around mature trees where they can mate and lay their eggs. It's like choosing a school close to home. So when the nymphs hatch, they just burrow underground and develop quietly, feeding on the juice from the roots. After 13 or 17 years underground, periodic cicadas just can't keep a low profile anymore. That loud, non-stop buzzing comes from the males looking for females. 
Nature has given males a special organ that produces a clicking sound. This sound comes from the rapid vibration of ribbed drum-like plates. But to make them vibrate, cicadas literally deform their own bodies. If the human body were like a cicada's body, it would have a thick set of muscles on both sides of the torso, which could squeeze the chest inward, causing the ribs to bend one at a time. Relaxing the muscles would let the ribs return to their original shape, and they would buzz, because that's exactly what happens in the male cicada body about 300 to 400 times per second. The things you do to find a girlfriend. So the female is found, mating happens, and after that, the females make slits in the tree branches to deposit their eggs. In general, their work is finished, just like the work of the males. Adult periodical cicadas live only three to four weeks and don't make it to the point where their offspring appear about six weeks later. Nymphs and one cicada usually lays 24 to 28 eggs, fall to the ground on their own, and dig tunnels in the soil to then repeat the cycle. Actually, the appearance of periodical cicada broods is a phenomenon that people have been recording since ancient times. But it's hard to figure out the exact number of insects, or to tell if, for example, the number of cicadas in a brood is going up. You have to keep track of each one individually. For instance, Brood 6 was last spotted in 2017 and before that in 2000. Brood 5 was last seen in 2016. In 2015, there was an overlap of two broods, though it wasn't as intense as the 2024 event and impacted two fewer states. Overall, if we can come to any kind of conclusion, it turns out that periodic cicadas emerge every year, but these are always different broods that emerge in different places. And while some come up to the surface to reproduce, trillions of others stay underground and wait their turn. But if periodic cicadas show up every year and often in huge numbers, cluttering everything around, why haven't people solved the problem of getting rid of them yet? Moreover, periodic cicadas are sometimes confused with voracious locusts. Thomas Jefferson clearly wasn't the only one who had this problem. The thing is, cicadas are more of a, well, a minor nuisance than a source of economic damage. They can harm young trees and some fruit crops. Remember, right? Mother cicadas gnaw channels and tree bark where they lay their eggs. Sometimes cut branches don't recover from the damage and die, but that's not too common. However, there are several reasons why we shouldn't eliminate periodical cicadas. First of all, they are indeed harmless. Scientists recommend leaving cicadas alone if possible since they don't bite or sting and don't carry diseases. They just live their weird cicada life. Second, cicadas are also useful for the ecosystem. Fat, slow, and tasty, these insects are the perfect food for birds, and not just them. Cicadas also aerate the soil when they dig into it or come up to the surface. This, by the way, allows rainwater to penetrate the ground and nourish plant roots even in hot months. When females lay eggs, they naturally prune the trees, which results in more flowers and fruit growing the next year. After the death of the cicada, their bodies, and there are many of them, add a huge amount of nitrogen and other nutrients to the soil. In short, it's not an insect, but a gift. And third, there are just too many cicadas to fight against them. Scientists advise against spraying pesticides because it simply won't help. You can't spray enough poison to kill all the cicadas, but in the process of unsuccessfully trying to kill the cicadas, you might end up killing other insects. Well, as for those who are concerned about their trees, it's recommended to get special protective nets and leave the poor cicadas alone. And finally, cicadas emerge from Maryland to Oklahoma, from Illinois to Alabama, but not all in the same place at the same time. No matter how scary a cicada outbreak may seem, it's not possible for a billion insects to gather in one confined area. So we figured it out. Periodic cicadas are not only harmless, but also pretty awesome. Now it's time to move on to another question that's really bugging me. Why on earth do they spend so much time underground? Insects don't usually do that. And the timing is so weird, 13 and 17 years? It turns out that it's all about predators. Most of them have quite a short life cycle and usually live between two and 10 years. This means that emerging on the surface during an even number of years would land the cicadas right in the predator's claws, or teeth, basically right on their dinner plate. And when there are a lot of predators, they're hungry. And it's tough for a chubby cicada to survive in such conditions. But periodic cicadas dig out every 13 and 17 years, avoiding times when predators are abundant. They emerge at moments when populations are on the decline. The point is that 13 and 17 are prime numbers, making it really hard for a predator to sync its own cycle with them. Plus, the cicadas themselves almost never overlap. 
only once every 221 years. Basically, it's like an evolutionary trick to keep predators from relying on predictable emergence. But there's also a second reason, or rather, another theory why they act like this. It was suggested in a study from 1993. So here's the thing. So many cicadas emerge at once that predators just can't eat them all. They simply gorge themselves on cicadas and start avoiding them, completely losing interest for a while. There are so many cicadas that even such losses in the population won't stop them from successfully reproducing. Am I the only one who thinks one reason contradicts the other? Let me know what you think in the comments. But here's another question. How do cicadas know when it's time to come up? It seems odd that insects can count to 13 or 17. They're just, well, insects. But cicadas have been doing this for centuries without ever getting it wrong. And each one of them has to figure out two things. Choose the right year and then the right day, or more like night, in that year to come to the surface. We know that they live at the base of trees and go through yearly cycles connected to changes in the tree's physiology. However, scientists still can't say for sure how they do it. Cicadas emerge from the ground in the spring, but it's definitely not because of the temperature. Why? It's simple. Some patches of ground can be colder than others, so if it were just about the soil warming up, cicadas would be emerging randomly, not in an organized way. According to another theory, the year cicadas emerge is determined by what researchers consider internal molecular clocks. For cicadas, these clocks are probably calibrated by certain environmental signals that indicate the passing of the year. For example, in response to the leaves on the trees falling, the composition of the liquid in the tree roots changes, and since cicadas feed on it, they might notice it. You know how sommeliers can tell the year of the grapes just by tasting the wine? It's like that here. Mm, woodsy juice from 2018, Southern Slope. Mm, let's sit for another six years. Choosing the day is a lot easier. Cicadas wait for an external signal, meaning when night falls, they come out of their holes when the ground hits a certain temperature, about 64 degrees Fahrenheit, and there definitely won't be much variation in time. But no one's immune to mistakes. In 2017, there were reports of cicadas appearing that hadn't been seen since 2004. It seemed like 13 years had passed, everything was on schedule. There's a catch. These cicadas were expected to appear in 2021. It was a brood with a cycle that lasts 17 years. However, not the entire brood came up to the surface. Experts estimated that these early birds might make up only about 5 to 10 percent. The rest calmly waited for their turn. And although this does happen sometimes, cicadas are otherwise very precise as if they're hiding tiny alarm clocks underground. They are harmful after all. Not long ago, scientists suddenly found out that trees grow more slowly during and right after the emergence of cicada broods, but it's not because cicadas affect the trees themselves, they're just way too tempting a food source for birds. In nature, everything's connected. Birds eat cicadas, and naturally, they hunt fewer caterpillars. Cicadas are bigger and tastier, plus there are just so many of them. As a result, caterpillars thrive. No one stops them from eating tree leaves and the trees suffer. In 2021, in the area where there was a cicada invasion, scientists counted twice as many caterpillars as usual, therefore the trees suffered twice as much. In a regular year, birds control the damage done by herbivorous insects, but in cicada years, nothing goes as planned. It leads to an unexpected damage. Wedding without cicadas some people choose a beautiful date for their wedding, but in states where cicada invasions happen, the main thing is to pick the right month. The most popular wedding month is June, a time when there is a serious risk of ending up right in the middle of the insect's breeding season. So the most common question that the Cicada Mania website gets is about weddings. People are really trying to plan their events so they don't overlap with cicadas because, well, can you imagine what kind of celebration that would be? Tens of dead bugs underfoot, still living ones landing on the food and people, and meanwhile they're chirping as loudly as a plane? Oh yes, they also need to put up awnings because the cicadas are peeing and it looks like rain. Although even the biggest believer in omens wouldn't consider it a good sign if a bunch of insects peed on the newlyweds. Watch your dogs. Remember predators that stuff themselves with cicadas and then don't want to see them anymore? Actually, it's quite common to hear news that cicadas are being eaten by pet dogs. Overall, the insects are harmless, and if your pet eats a few, nothing serious will happen, but it's pretty hard to stick to just a few cicadas when there are so many around. And apparently they're tasty from a dog's point of view. In the end, pets eat too many and then problems start. Upset stomach, allergies, a huge vet bill, and a man on backyard walks until the cicada invasion is over. 
That's the way it is. And you owe me a like. See you later.